What's up, everybody? My name is Sangeet Chafel, and this is Talking Cinema. Short films are dynamic, exciting, thought-provoking, and artistic, to say the least. Short films are generally termed as short subjects or featurettes, usually running under 40 minutes. They are used for industry purposes as well as a platform to showcase talent, but it has recently evolved into a cinematic experience in itself. And on that note, let me introduce my guest, Mr. Kelzong Dorji, a director, a cinematographer, and an editor. He made his first short film in 2011 titled Little Rock Stars. He has worked as assistant director in feature films such as Lunana, Yak in the Classroom, as well as The Red Phallus. He has worked in many commissioned works as well as his own film projects. But tonight we will be talking on his short film titled Song of Silence, a very poetic film. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kelsong. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. How you been? I'm good. I've been good. Thank you. And how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Busy with this uh, talking cinema show. And mm -hmm. uh, we are very glad. I'm very glad that you have come to the show and uh, want to have a conversation with you on short films. Uh, I understand that you've been quite busy with the uh, Samu platform. Tell us a little bit more about that. Recently, we shot uh, a short film for Samu. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, one of the four short films for the Omnibus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the central theme among the four shorts will be Timpu. Okay. So, uh, along with the uh, Karma Wanchu, uh -huh. Upasana, mm -hmm. Chant, and myself, there will be four short films about well, Tempo. And we could catch this on the Samo platform. Yes, yes. It should be up for stream sometimes in June, I think. You guys heard it. Sometimes in June, uh, make sure to catch, the, catch, the, catch this uh, four short films. Uh, yeah. It should be quite interesting. But uh, what we want to talk about is your short film, Song of Silence. Interesting title. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about this. Uh, Song of Silence was my second short film, uh, uh -huh. which was primarily uh, produced for the Beskop Tetu Short Film Festival, mm -hmm. which happened in 2016. And uh, I think uh, when I was working on a commission project for one of the uh, NGOs, I think, mm -hmm. we had a couple of uh, segments where we had to go to Wangsal Institute in Paro and shoot there with the children there mm -hmm. and uh, spending a few days with the children at Wangsal trying to communicate with them mm -hmm. through uh, sign language and facial expressions. Sure. It was an eye-opening experience for me. Sure. So that's where I think I thought uh, how it would be if you have never heard any sound, you know. And that's where I think uh, the inspiration and the motivation for the uh, short film came uh, from. So the short film is my subtle and humble attempt at trying to explore the world of the people who have, uh, who have that kind of disability, who sure. can't hear anything. Sure. So that's it, that's where the film... The film is wonderfully made and for the audience, uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, let me just describe what the film is about. The film is about a mute girl uh, on her journey or on her uh, trying to seek uh, ways of or trying to finding ways to hear basically. Yes. And it's very elemental in this stage because she goes through this uh, series of experiencing the five elements. Yes. Uh, describe that a little bit more. For, for the audience? So after that experience, it, I had it in my mind for some time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think around the same time, I had also read a poem. I forget by who now. And the poem was something around nature, the elements and all. Mm -hmm. So when I was trying to develop, uh, take inspiration from my experience at Wangsal and develop it into a short film. Mm -hmm. And once I started writing, uh, I took help uh, of a couple of my friends. Mm -hmm. And we had the premise, like a, uh, basically a deaf girl wishing she could hear, mm -hmm. at least for once. Sure. But then we had to make it 
uh, cinematically more appealing, interesting. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, we also thought, at least at that point, like we had to bring in some Bhutanese elements into it. Mm -hmm. So that's where we, and that poem that I had read mm -hmm. and discussing with my friends, that's where we thought like, how about bringing the five elements of nature, which at least in our culture is very vibrant. Sure. Sure. So that's where we thought, okay, then let us have a traverse through the five elements in her uh, pursuit of to be able to hear. hear. So that's how we, I think, structured and wrote the film. And it's beautifully weaved in together. And uh, before we get any further, I just want to show some clip uh, from the short film, Song of Silence. Check it out. <laughs> Satin digging alo, se jon be midi na gishe. Inru ngalo dami. Yankushishibe, chugging on gom chupme. Kisisi Lim Sancho di ning pogi, my hin sansa zomiti, nagishe. Iru, nalutami. Ding di be, chigi nga dim me. Cha tok to. Kam to to. Nga do ni ki den lu, chigi chara cita mi di, nga gi she. Iru, nga lu da mi. Chilke digi chigi nga sani mojo suna kebab me Chatok to Lem Ngara yun rim nye niki den lo Chira ta che chumi di nagi she Iru ngaluta me Go, go, go! Open 
Uè, ma che come ti dici che questo è? Ma che ti caro come te? Çünkü gosu be ya. Ne gitti karo gomete. Oy. Gosu be ya. Gome gasi. Uh, just a beautiful, beautifully made film. Um, but uh, what I want to get into is the nitty gritty of the film, uh, the mm -hmm. film itself, mm -hmm. uh, mainly the maison scene mm -hmm. and uh, how the, the shots were framed. And I think there was a lot of thought process how you framed mm -hmm. each particular shots, uh, especially in terms of the elemental stage, uh, mm -hmm. even what she was wearing. Yes, uh, it, when it was the water, she's trying to experience the water. She's wearing a blue wonju. Blue wonju yeah. uh, when it's the fire, it's the red wonju. When yeah. it's the air, it's the white wonju. Uh, obviously, for the earth, it was yellow, yellow. and uh, uh, purple for the technology. That was the sixth element that you guys also yes, introduced yes. in the ending, which was quite interesting for me. Uh, tell, us, tell us about the maison scene and the thought process that goes behind that. Uh, I think... Uh, a lot of that also has to do with the same two friends who helped me with the uh, writing of the film, sure. the screenplay. And uh, that's, uh, we, I think, uh, as compared to my first short film, which I did in 2011, I wanted to do it a little better, mm -hmm. a little more properly this sure. time. So that's where we thought, we, let's put in some effort into the mm -hmm. color palette also. Sure. And uh, initially, we wanted to have also different sets of Kira for all the elements. Uh -huh. But then along, as we were discussing more into it, I think we thought, like, let's just keep it as subtle as possible and stick to just the change of colors with sure. the Wanju. Sure. And let there be just one Kira for all. Sure. And I thought that made sense. And I think and to color coordinating with the elements is like... Not a rocket science, especially in Bhutan. Right. Like it's everywhere. <laughs> right. The prayer flags, I don't know, uh, occasion ceremonies. Uh -huh. So it was very easy that way. Okay. It was just a matter of how much you wanted to do it and how little you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So that was it. <laughs> Another thing that I found really quite interesting is there's that <laughs> motif of repeating. Uh, every time you introduce a new element, mm -hmm. uh, she's looking upon through the window and there's a reflective nature mm -hmm. as well as at the every end of each element she is staring at the camera as if she's yes, staring yes. at the audience um what can the audience take away from that is is, is that a significant uh, reason why you've done that that was uh, uh breaking the fourth wall right basically uh -huh. it i'll be honest with uh, with you i had not thought about that uh -huh. until the first scene we shot, which was the earth, sure. the yellow one. Uh -huh. And uh, when the, our cinematographer was framing it and we were rehearsing, getting the blocking right, she came and she looked into the camera. Sure. And I was like, and it was something momentary that we decided. It was, pa for me, it was very powerful. Yes, yes. It was as if she was speaking to me. Yes. And you know, she's a, she's a deaf, yes. she's a deaf girl. Yes. And she has a hard time communicating. Obviously, uh, the the, the narration yeah. or the voice over the poem that she's reading in mm. her head, it's in her head. Yes, yes. And you could see the difficulty in terms of, hey, she cannot, you know, she cannot hear or she's mm. silent. 
but then she's staring at you and yes. she's literally speaking to you. Yes. I found it very powerful. So like I was saying, that was very accidental. And okay. when we saw that, in the, when I was looking at the monitor and she was just doing her rehearsing, blocking, and she looked in the camera, I was like, oh. Then I talked to our cinematographer and let's have a look into the camera. Sure. And he was like, are you sure? Soli, you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> but I mean, like I know, we know how the story flows and what it's sure. supposed to be. And like sure. you said, I think at that moment, I thought that would have more impact, mm -hmm. which we hadn't thought sure. until that accidental it's, moment. Uh, I think so. within the industry, I mean, uh, I mean, when you when you uh, talk to directors or even uh, uh, watch interviews of mm -hmm. uh, famous directors, they call it a happy accident. Yes. And yes. that tends to happen. No? And yes, you, yes. you have to be somewhat uh, free of yeah. mind yes. in order to keep these happy Stay accidents. open. No? Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, but wonderfully, wonderfully done. Um, uh, another element that I want to talk about, obviously there's the five elements, and in the end, um, how it ends is uh, with the, I would like to call it the sixth element, the mm -hmm. technology, and, mm -hmm. uh, and how it's so overpowering mm -hmm. to the point she faints. <laughs> yes. uh, personally, for me, I think that was the weakest uh, segment in the film, mm -hmm. I thought. Mm -hmm. Because uh, somehow there's all these modern elements coming in contact with mm -hmm. uh, nature, mm -hmm. the five elements of nature, mm -hmm. which I thought was more like a misfit. Okay. But uh, of course, we make short films to make mistakes and learn. Sure. So, but at that time, we couldn't think of anything better. Uh -huh. But then I think it's okay. <laughs> it I, th I think it's okay. It might have been uh, perhaps uh, in, in uh, the linkage or to, to sequencing mm -hmm. to get to that might, mm -hmm. might have been a little bit of problematic. Mm -hmm. But if, when you look at the general overview of mm -hmm. the film in itself of how it's so elemental, very organic, mm -hmm. and then there's a technology, and mm -hmm. then it's yes, overbearing yes. and overpowering. Yes, yes. I mean, initially when I watched the film, I didn't take it as a, as a, as a mute girl trying to find ways to hear. Mm -hmm. I found it more of a, of a, of a narrative of Mother Earth. Yes, That's how yeah. I took it. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you, when you hear the poem being read out in the, in the, in the narration or the voiceover, uh, I, I felt like it was the story of Mother Earth. <laughs> and how technology perhaps mm. is, uh, first is silent, right? Silent, Fire is yeah. silent, wind is silent. Even though you hear mm. it, it's silent in its nature. Mm. And then you have this te technology, which is artificial noise just mm. polluting the earth. That's what I took from the film initially. Mm -hmm. I had to watch it two, three, four different <laughs> times in order for, for me to sort of really fully grasp it and mm. sort of really understand the cinematic nature of it. But yeah. overall, it was beautifully made. Yeah, sure. uh, what I wanted to ask is, are you, are you, do you commonly uh, use CGI in your films? Uh, because I noticed the establishing shot yes, of yes. the home oh, and the moon, uh, and it's all computer yes. Uh, animated. Yes. Yeah. Usually, I'm not a big fan of uh, CGI or mm -hmm. VFX. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, I don't restrict myself to sure. You know, I mean, if it's there and if it helps enhance your story, why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, particularly in the Song of Silence, the way we use the CGI is, the moment you see it, you know that it's CGI. Right. And that was the intent in a okay. lot of it. Because if you look at the film, the way it starts and the way it ends, actually everything that happened is also could have been in her dream. Yes, you know. or in her head, yeah. yeah. So that's why we had the liberty to exaggerate it, make it more saturated color-wise, okay. make the moon bigger than right. how you would actually see it yeah. with your eyes, you know, everything. So that was our idea of uh, while doing it with our VFX artists, like, yeah, let's not do it, like, exaggerate it, you know, over-exaggerated and, like, make it bigger, brighter, more sure. colorful. Sure. But that was the intent. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, in a lot of ways, uh, films are... A perspective, isn't it? Yes, it's, yes. it's how you want to tell yes, the story, yes. uh, and I think I think you've done that. I think you've done that. And <laughs> n n the fact that you're saying yes is CGI, and how the film ends as well with the with the uh, the sixth element, yes. if you want to put it that way, with the technology, yes. it sort of connects back, Connect. doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> uh, which I'm sort of thinking right now at the moment. Yes, it sort of co does connect mm. back, uh, and the film is sort of left open in that sense. In that sense, yes, yes, yes. So there was one shot I remember in particular, which we 
uh, put in the last scene, the mm. last sequence, when mm -hmm. we go back to her opening the eyes. Mm -hmm. So that was the shot of the candle on the shelf. Yes. So the sh movie starts with the candle, uh -huh. uh, like a little big, you know, longer. Right, yeah. And somewhere in between, when the fire scene comes, she, she lights, lights the, the candle. candle and right. when you show the candle again in the end, right. the candle it's is still, no, no, it's oh, still it's big. Back. Okay. So that was like how we thought we could keep it subtle okay. as like actually everything that happened in the movie never actually happened. It was just in our thoughts, in our imagination or to make it more believable in our dreams, let's sure. say. So that was our idea with the Mizosin that you right. mentioned earlier. Uh, beautiful, beautifully <laughs> made, uh, amazing. Uh, please uh, watch watch the film. If you haven't already watched it, uh, you could catch it on uh, Besko Bhutan platform. Uh, Song of Silence, do catch it. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. Uh, it's not very long, so you could definitely watch it. It's about 15 minutes yeah, roughly or so. 15 minutes. So do catch it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't watched it. What gets you into short film, basically? What's it about short film that you, that you prefer so much? Uh, personally, I think short films are a lot easier to mm -hmm. produce, mm -hmm. of course, as compared to feature mm -hmm. length, you know. And also, uh, the fact that it's short, mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to write or mm -hmm. uh, structure it also. Sure. There's not uh, too many intricacies mm -hmm. in itself. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, plus, when you're an aspiring filmmaker, I think short films are the best way to go about sure. it. So, and like you said, uh, short films are easier to watch also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't take much of your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, mean, I kind of find that short films, yes, uh, when you first mm -hmm. start into the realm of cinema or filmmaking, mm -hmm. it's a great way, it's a great segue to get into that. Mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, it, it, leaves you, it gives you that much more freedom, freedom to sort of explore. Yeah. Yes, uh, how do you, what's the treatment that you give when you, when you start working on a short film? How do you treat it? Do you uh, treat it like a feature film? Uh, Obviously, you mentioned a little bit uh, earlier uh, when you said it's it's a bit easier to get into. Yes, it. yes. But how do you, how do you treat it, a short film? Yes, yes. Uh, the idea of starting with a short film is to do it properly, you know. Mm -hmm. And by properly, I mean treat it as if you would treat any other project, like mm -hmm. a feature project. Mm -hmm. So whether your short film is of like a hundred thousand ultram or two hundred thousand mm -hmm. ultram, or you work on a feature project where it's of eighty, ninety, hundred thousand ultram, mm -hmm. you know. The idea is to go with the same approach, take mm -hmm. it seriously, mm -hmm. get down to the minute details mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. and get the right people, collab. At the end of the day, like uh, filmmaking is a collaborative yes, it is. art, you know, like, yes, so find the right people, communicate, mm -hmm. get your ideas across, be receptive to their suggestions. Mm -hmm. And I think th my approach is to yeah, take it as uh, any other big project or feature films. I don't, the only difference I would say is it's uh, shorter in terms of production, uh -huh. in terms of length, uh -huh. less in terms of uh, budget, but otherwise the way you work, it, should, it shouldn't uh, be any different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, for, for a lot of people out there watching, maybe young audience watching who wants to make short films, um, there's a tendency that when like, even for myself as well, mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to make a film, but then uh, you start thinking about all these ideas in your head. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some certain standards that you might want to follow when you're making a short film, depending on your budget, location, yes. perhaps. You don't want to write a script that, that has 10 different characters, <laughs> right? Or a location where you, it's impossible for you to get to, or mm -hmm. maybe because you can't do CGI or VFX, it might be impossible. So you might be restricted to writing a story, a story that's that's relevant in, within your budget range or within your shooting range or whatnot. How do you, how do you go about that? Uh, I mean, what can you tell I, the, the young film enthusiasts who want to do that? I totally get your point. And I think that is also one of the biggest problems with me when I try to write. I mean, I've only written two short films so mm -hmm. far and the second one with the help of uh, two of my friends. Mm -hmm. But uh, exactly like what you mentioned, every time I write, before even... Uh, like start writing what I think is the logistic size. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, let me write a scene. Ah, it's gonna be more expensive. Right. Ah, it's almost impossible, which I think is not a good thing, mm -hmm. especially. It mm -hmm. uh, affects a lot in your, with your creativity. Mm -hmm. the, if you consider all these logistical sites, mm -hmm. things before you start writing, then mm -hmm. it, 
it's already uh, restrictive in a lot of ways. Sure. And that is one of the bad habits I think I have with okay. me. At least when I try to write. Uh -huh. And because of that, uh, <clears throat> the my third shot recently, mm -hmm. which I finished shooting recently, mm -hmm. uh, it was written by TG. Okay. He was very kind enough to agree to write for me. So he but wrote the script. Yes, but what happened was, uh, <coughs> excuse me, after I, we went back and forth with Samu and all these things, then I started writing it myself first. Mm -hmm. But I had told TG, hey, I'm trying to write one. Once I have something, I'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. Can you just uh, go through it and yeah. give me your feedback, feedback. suggestions? Yeah. Yeah, he was like, sure. And it took me about two, three weeks, I think. And, and it was during the lockdown, so I had okay. all the time. In there. <laughs> and after I finished and I sent it to him, and TG was like, ah. Oh. It's not good. <laughs> uh, all the reasons, uh -huh. which I agree with him okay. totally. It could have been there. You could have gone there, this, that. And uh -huh. and that's where I said, uh, TG, would it be possible if you write it for me? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not really, I, uh -huh. I don't really know how to write films. Sure. You know? And he was like, okay. And once I got the first draft from him, I went through it. And man, it was something I would have never written for the exact reasons you mentioned earlier. Okay. You know? right. He had about, 12, 13 uh, uh, extras as uh -huh. in secondary characters, uh -huh. you know. And their location was in the meat shop, in the middle of the town. And these are the things that, like you said, I would never put it in my uh -huh. script because uh -huh. the moment I think, ah, it right. be easier to shoot with. the yeah, logistics yeah. and the probability yeah. or the feasibility, yeah, the feasibility of filming a, yeah. fil a film like that, right? So that's when I, after I got it and TJ and I, we were like, talking almost on a daily basis going discussing about the script back and forth mm -hmm. and that's where I told him like uh, yeah when I tried writing myself the first time these were the things like that was kind of restricting me and he was like solely that's a really bad habit at least I don't try to do that and you should not either and that's exactly what you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times I mean when I went to film school as well I mean the first uh, first weeks of our classes within the film school, especially in terms of screenwriting, mm -hmm. this is exactly what the professor taught you. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to be making a short film, you have to take into consideration mm -hmm. the, the budget, yes. the logistics, the location, and the type of equipments that you have mm -hmm. and what you could afford, the, t uh, the amount of char characters you want to have within your film. Uh, the, the advice from my uh, film uh, professor was, stick to just one character. Yeah. Initially. Initially. And once you get more used to it, then introduce other characters because when you do introduce other characters, it, the story becomes mm -hmm. more complex. Mm -hmm. So it's just, a, it's, it's, it's just a sequential way of sort of moving forward and perhaps maybe into uh, also making a feature film where it becomes more complicated mm -hmm. like that. Um, do you obviously you worked in feature films as an yes. assistant director. Do you prefer making short films or do you prefer making feature films? And what's the difference just for the audience? I think at least like one of your earlier questions, uh, at least my approach to filmmaking, any filmmaking, mm. be it short, like mm. feature, or I don't know, longer than mm. feature, if there's any, is the same. Mm. I go with the same integrity, same mm. work ethics, mm. you know. But the only difference would be, of course, the budget, mm. the number of days, the duration, mm. product duration, mm -hmm. and the crew, of course, mm. obviously. But other than that, I don't think uh, there's much difference. Mm. At least personally, you okay. know, I don't, uh, it's okay, it's a short film, right. it'll do. Right. I don't go with that kind of okay. approach. So you treat it yes, just the yes, same. Yes. If it's a million yes. dollar yeah, yeah, feature yeah. film or a, yeah, or a $500, yeah. or 500 neutral uh, yes, short yes. film, you treat it the treat same it way. Same. You yes. dive into it yes. with 100%. Yes, yes. That's but a uh, personally, thing. I feel working on feature films, because I've only worked uh, as a production crew assistant mm -hmm. director mm -hmm. on Pau's uh, Lunana and mm -hmm. uh, TG's Red Fellows. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my experience uh, working on those two films and working on my own short films, mm -hmm. I feel uh, working on feature films are in a lot of ways easier mm -hmm. because there are more people, you sure. know, more manpower, sure. and there is uh, like a distinct uh, di different uh, departments. Sure. Roles di and responsibilities. Responsibility, right. exactly, department heads uh -huh. and enough people, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. You don't have to worry about the food or right. getting things here. Right. They, it's just a matter of how you communicate or how you mm -hmm. disseminate uh, the information sure. and there are right people to do it. Sure. But when it comes to short films like 
You have to be jack of all yes, trades. Yes, yes. It's we work with a small crew, <laughs> barely enough equipment and gear, mm -hmm. and especially when you like try to do it properly, you know, mm -hmm. giving some production value to mm -hmm. it, it's it's difficult that way. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, working on feature films, I find it personally easier. Sure. Yes. But the takeaway is you treat it the same way. Be I, short films I do or, at least. Yes, or, yes. or a feature film. Yes, I have a friend who does music, you know, uh -huh. and all sorts of uh, aspiring musicians come to him. Uh -huh. Some kids with money, some kids without money. Uh -huh. and I think that's one of the things I learned from him. Uh -huh. And to him, whether the project is for 10,000 or like 2,000, the amount of dedication hours he put in uh -huh. is the same. Uh -huh. And I was like, wow, that's something, you know, nice. Yeah. And because you love the craft. Yeah, yeah. You just love the craft. As long as his name, he says, as long as his name is associated with sure. it, doesn't matter how much he's getting, right. he just wants to give it his best, you know. So I think that's one of the things I learned from my friend. Are there any filmmakers that you're influenced by? Or do you, do you, have you learned the craft on your own, just through your pure interest? Or are there particular maybe feature film directors, cinematographers? Uh, mm -hmm. within the film industry, not just here in Bhutan, but even outside Hollywood. Um, outside the... Or historically, perhaps, that really influences you and in mm. how you make films, or in that sense. Yeah, I, I mean, at least when I first started uh, and when I started and got into the films, I used to be very, what do you say, I used to think oh, I should only watch art house cinema, you know, mm -hmm. all this abstract, mm -hmm. obscure cinemas mm -hmm. and learn. But I think now I've got to a point where I don't put that kind of a, a judgment before I watch the film, mm -hmm. you know. So I, as far as possible, uh, I try to watch all sorts of movies mm -hmm. from anywhere, mm -hmm. be it Hollywood, Bollywood, mm -hmm. European, Russian, mm -hmm. South American. Mm -hmm. As long as I can get my hands on, as long as I get recommended, mm -hmm. I try and watch it. But of course, when I watch it, there are films that I like and I don't like sure. that appeal to me and sure. that uh, doesn't you know sure. and uh, I don't particularly like or follow any kind of director or cinematographer uh -huh. as such but there are certain kind of movies genres of movies that sure. I think I prefer that's Ooh, what I've found to. I think I have an inclination towards uh, abstract obscure films mm. something that I enjoy while watching it, but mm -hmm. I don't really understand it. Sure, and then it makes I, you think. Basically. Yeah, it makes okay. you think, and I have to rewatch it, or I have to look it up, uh -huh. read about it, uh -huh. and try to ma make sense of it. So I like that kind of cinemas, uh -huh. and I don't, uh, It's I think it's a bad habit of me, I don't really make an effort to remember the director sure. or who shot it. Sure. But I, if I like the movie, I do like, you know, like de devour it, like in all sorts. I uh, read the reviews. I uh, watch the director and cinematographers' uh, interviews, all the Q and A's. I'm just bad with names. So, uh -huh. <laughs> and other than that, when it comes to our uh, Bhutanese scene, uh, yeah, they're like good filmmakers. I I look up to the likes of the Chen, T G, and. Uh, and on the third short film that we recently shot, I finally got to work with Jigme Tenzin. Uh -huh. I've, of course, worked with him on the on Red Fellas, Lunana, mm -hmm. but uh, this time we I got to work with him as like director, cinematographer, mm -hmm. and I it was a I had a great learning experience, mm -hmm. which I ha also had with my previous uh, uh, opportunities with the Pao and T G. You know, so but uh, personally, I think I'm. Uh, I really look up to TG. Okay. I think uh, I like his understanding of uh, not to demean or disrespect other filmmakers. Mm -hmm. They are equally good, talented. Mm -hmm. It's just the filmmaking is such a big subject that yes, it is, you know yes. you can, it, it can be very diverse. Yes. So, but I like the peculiarity and uh, TG's approach, you know, and I personally think I am influenced by him a lot. So and and TG, uh, as far mm -hmm. as I know, uh, I'm not sure if uh, if I'm correct in saying this, but no, he he's very influenced by art films. Uh, yes, a lot yes. of uh, I also kind of feel like the Ingmar Bergman type yes, of yes. film, which really I th and you could see it in his films yes, as well, yeah. and it's very symbolic in its symbolic. nature and whatnot. 
uh, which leads me to my next question. I mean, if you, will you be make, would you be making a feature film, or are you going to stick to shorts? And your film, will your films be poetic or, or artistic in that nature, or I... are you open to sort of making? Um, different types of genres of uh, films? I, I, uh, honestly, I haven't thought of a feature yet, you know. I just haven't thought about it. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm in a stage where I still need to make a few more short films mm -hmm. before I even give a thought of mm -hmm. making a feature, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still am trying to experiment with different uh, genres, different visual styles. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm just a three short film old, you know, right mm -hmm. now. And my th third short film is still on the table right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, third one, because it's uh, written by TJ, it has a lot of TJ in it also, sure. which I really like it because uh, from the three, th that was the first short film that I got to direct, uh, uh, written by somebody else. You know? Sure. So that so, way. So let me. Uh, so mm -hmm. are you filming it in a TJ esque style of filming, or are you putting your own elemental? Uh, your own style to it. I mean, uh, obviously, you're still developing your style. And yeah, you're yeah. saying you're just only three films, yeah. short films into it. Um, how, how are you approaching this? How did uh, you approach it, basically? I didn't really... I mean, when Jigmi, the cinematographer, when mm -hmm. two of us were going through the script and when mm -hmm. we discussed about it, uh, it wasn't like it has to be TG-ish or uh -huh. anything like that. But uh -huh. the way he wrote it... I don't think it could have been any other way. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. Just the way it was written. Yeah, just right. the way it was written. Okay. But I'm not saying he writes like that uh -huh. or he did that deliberately. Uh -huh. You know, It was just the nature of the narrative mm -hmm. that he tried to put together. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, but uh, not necessarily in the visual approach, visual style or the mm -hmm. stylistically, aesthetically, uh -huh. it's TG-ish, but uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the storyline itself, the way the story is being told, the presence of darkness, mm -hmm. uh, violence in it, mm -hmm. but no, without showing any darkness sure. or violence. Sure. So that's what I meant by it's okay. a, a lot uh, like TG, you know. Okay. And uh, personally, it was very. I took it as a big challenge. Okay. Because uh, it was written by TG, and uh -huh. for the first time, I'm trying to make one written by somebody else. Uh -huh. And yeah, but all in all, we had a great uh, experience. Uh, describe that experience. I mean, like uh, you mentioned, obviously, mm -hmm. the, the film industry or the film, uh, uh, the way we uh, create this craft mm -hmm. is a group thing. It, it's, yes, it's, it's, a, a it's a joint collaboration. Uh, and having the experience of working with Paolo in his feature mm -hmm. film, having the experience uh, of working in The Red Phallus with TG, mm -hmm. and now him writing a script. I mean, what's that all alike? I mean, like for any young film enthusiast or who's watching, mm -hmm. I mean, these days what's happening with the internet now is uh, you're a one-man show. You do yes, everything, yes. right? Yes. A lot of talking heads or yes. even in terms of the B-roll wise. I mean, I'm sure you've watched a lot of yes. uh, YouTube uh, videos where you can't do that. Yes. And that world that's happening and especially in the cinema world where you have to mm -hmm. uh, collaborate. I mean, what's that like? Yeah, like... Uh I mean, especially in terms of expressing artistically, you be it a scriptwriter or a cinematographer or or, or, or a sound person, lighting mm -hmm. person. I mean, you have to all work together in yes, order yes. to uh, achieve that one particular look. Yes, right? yes. Uh, when personally, like when I write and like basically when you, uh, whoever is directing it, writes mm -hmm. the script, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the film is already done in his head. You know. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I think. Mm -hmm. With my first two shots, sure. the moment I was like putting down the words and writing sentences or a scene, part of it is already shot in my head. Okay. So that way, there's very I think little room mm -hmm. for a third uh, person idea to come in. You know. But uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to ask is like yes, now you yes, already yes. have in your head. Yes. How do you communicate that artistically to somebody else, like let's say an actor? Mm -hmm. How do you direct an actor to get that? artistic uh, vision that you've already had as a mm -hmm. director in your head while you're reading this, writing the script. Mm -hmm. And now in order for the artist to, the director yes. to get that out or perform that, or perhaps even capture it as a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that happen? How does With that happen? Is think it difficult or I mean? Sometimes it is difficult, mm -hmm. I think, especially when you're dealing with uh, abstract concepts. Sure. It is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. But uh, the way I try to do it is uh, I try to put in a lot of uh, examples mm -hmm. and a lot uh, examples and cite examples from real life you mm. know 
So this is something like that. So imagine, mm -hmm. so I try to put in the picture in the uh, talent's head. Sure. So imagine you are this and that, this and mm -hmm. that, and how would you do? So you don't have to act, act just think. Mm -hmm. The moment you think, the moment it's in, in, in your head, it, the moment you feel it, mm -hmm. the, the acting or the expression mm -hmm. or your body, the way your body mm -hmm. acts, everything naturally comes out, mm -hmm. you know. But if you try to act without understanding right. what it is, then it's difficult. So I think with talents, uh, with artists, at least that's what I've tried. I've, I think more than telling them what to do or how to do, I try to spend time uh, with them, trying to tell them what is it, mm -hmm. how it would be if it was you personally. Mm -hmm. me. Put them in a situation. Yeah, situation. They build a situation yes, around yes, it around uh, according to the script yeah. and whatnot and have them imagine yes, it. Yes, yes, imagine it. Okay. So that's, I think, my approach. Now, uh, well... Yes, I mean, uh, we, I mean I'm, I'm sure we all find it quite difficult to express the ideas, mm -hmm. be it in film or in just yes. in real life. It's very difficult to express your idea or communicate your idea to another person. Mm -hmm. And film industry is just part of that. And I think, uh, uh, but regardless, uh, you've, you've had quite success, especially in the film uh, uh, Song of Silence. I mean... I mean, on the face value, you, you're not seeing a lot of, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of mm -hmm. acting yes, per yes. se going on. It's just her walking through it. But it's that expressionless, perhaps, maybe just looking into the camera. There's nuances within yes, it that yes. makes it quite beautiful. Um, for you as a filmmaker, now, obviously, you, you have directed, you've been the cinematographer, you're an editor. Which part of that role within that, in this, that genre, you know, that craft, do you enjoy the most? Uh, cinematographer, perhaps, maybe directing, editing? I mean... Or are you, do you just enjoy the entire wholeness yeah. of it? I enjoy doing all three of those, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes it gets difficult when you have to, uh, let's say, direct and edit the same project, which mm -hmm. I'm doing for my third mm -hmm. short, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. Or likewise, if you have written and you're shooting it, mm -hmm. But if somebody else has written it, somebody else is directing it, and if I have to just operate the camera, mm -hmm. then I enjoy it a lot more, you know. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I try, then that way I can just read the script, discuss with the director, and mm -hmm. be there just as the cinematographer mm -hmm. or the cameraman, you know, trying mm -hmm. to bring the, his idea or his vision mm -hmm. into the frame. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's quite difficult when you have to take, like, two of the three roles on the same project. Okay. Then it it's like, for example, uh, with the project that we, uh, uh, the Tamu, uh, Samus uh, film that uh, I, when I edited it, it's very difficult, not uh, difficult to forget how we shot it, or, you know. Mm -hmm. So the director side of me is at the, with me as the editor. And uh -huh. sometimes that emotional attachment sure. is difficult. And it's even worse when you have shot it and you have to cut it yourself. Yes. So I was like, no, I have this, this, to. That's yeah. where I wanted to get at because yeah. I mean, especially as a cinematographer and an yeah. editor, you're filming and you're, you're giving your 100% exactly. on each shot. Yeah. And especially when you have to chop it, chop off, it off, there's that... Yeah. That loss there, yes, and yes. Uh, that feeling is I mean, indescribable. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to, but the maybe the story requires that you don't show True, all those yeah. shots. So that way, it's it's always a constant battle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, I, I'm showing it, or I always show it to people, you mm -hmm. know, my friends, and mm -hmm. they give feedback and all sorts. So it helps that mm -hmm. way. But if we had a choice, if there was money, if there's budget mm -hmm. enough, it's mm -hmm. always better to get like different people for all these different roles. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier. Let the editor do the editing, sure. cinematographer do the shooting, you know. So, but um, what what do you think about the scenario here in Bhutan? Uh, coming back to Bhutan mm -hmm. and just filming, and uh, especially we're talking about roles such as cinematographer, directors, actors, uh, light person, camera person, right? Mm -hmm. How is the scene here in Bhutan? I mean, it, you know, uh, compared to a foreign country, perhaps, especially within the independent filmmaking uh, mm. scene, in uh, your opinion? In my opinion, at least uh, based on the two films that I got to work on, Paus Lunana and TG's Red Palace, mm. yeah, it's, it's uh, at least in terms of cinematography, we, we had mm -hmm. Jigmi, so mm -hmm. he's nothing less, you know. Mm -hmm. So and he's been involved in like yes, pr yes. practically every, every pretty much projects. Yes, yes, here that, in Bhutan. <laughs> yes, in Bhutan, right? Yeah, and uh, the kind of exposure, experience that he brings in, you uh -huh. know, because he has done uh, worked on so many films outside of Bhutan uh -huh. too. 
in back in the US sure. in India sure. so yeah so that kind of experience uh, I think it helps a lot mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise it's just a matter of like giving it your hundred percent and doing sure. it with you know, uh, basically I guess what I'm asking is mm -hmm. like now with Jigmi right mm -hmm. you have to use uh, I mean his skills I mean there's mm -hmm. no question about it in terms mm -hmm. of his talent and skills within the cinematography but he's the only one you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lack of uh, yes, yes. cinematographers yeah. or directors or actors. Uh, that's what the question that I'm asking mm. in your own experience. Because you end up working with the same people for so many different projects. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a great thing, but at the same time, it's a lack of varieties. Yes, yes. I kind of feel like. What's your take on that? Uh, it's true what you're saying is. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Well, we are a developing country, and yeah, this, yeah. this type of craft is uh, yeah. Now only with exposure, up, right? and of course, Jigmi, you know, uh, doing a lot of projects here, and then when somebody watches it, and you see the difference, mm -hmm. you know, it's very mm -hmm. prominent. Sure. And I think it will encourage a lot of enthusiasts, uh, mm -hmm. cinematographers, mm -hmm. to take it more seriously mm -hmm. and go the right way, you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm only hopeful though. But for now, we are very thankful that someone like Jigmi is Well, he's there, right? Yeah, At least, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's going to be a role model, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the future. I mean, 20 and years from now, yes, people yeah. will be talking about he's how... He's living the Bhutanese uh, history uh, in cinematography, man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ultimately, so, okay. Mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you... Now, you've worked on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you've worked on uh, as an assistant director for some feature films. Mm -hmm. You've worked on three short films. Mm -hmm. um, what would you tell uh, a film enthusiast outside uh, who's watching, um, who wants to get into this, uh, this craft, this art? What would you tell them? I don't know, then. I mean, like, if you want to make films, I think you should do it because you want to. You have mm -hmm. a story to tell, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it, I should be saying this, but don't get into it for the glam. Mm you know, glamorous mm. side of it, because there's nothing like that in reality. It's a lot of hard work, yeah, isn't it? it's a lot of hard work. Just to make one 15-minute short film takes you, like, I don't know, five, six months, even longer, mm -hmm. if you do it properly. Mm -hmm. So, unless you're dedicated, determined, you know, passionate, mm -hmm. I mean, don't get into it for all the wrong reasons. I think that's all I would say. <laughs> and get in it because you want to tell a story. Yeah. You have this it's, desire it's, to just tell a story. Tell a story. Yeah, that's that's what, uh, how it is with me. I mean, mm -hmm. my first short film was in 2011, mm -hmm. second was in 16, mm -hmm. third is in 2021. 20, I mean, I don't try to make a short film because I have to make one, you know. Mm -hmm. I just have to, it, uh, even I don't know how long it'll take until I'll make my next. Sure. The, everything has to fall in place, you know. And then, like, but at the same time, all these times that I'm not making one, I am, like, in a way, like, thinking, concepts, I don't know ideas, mm -hmm. talking to people. So, yeah, you have to have a lot of patience too. <laughs> and just try it out, basically, yeah, just if you're just interested. Yeah, just try it out, try make it mistakes out. in the field. Yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I Can think. I ask you, have you, have you, did you, did you study film? No. Purely interest. Yes, yes. Sir. So basically, that's what I'm, uh, for anyone who's watching out there, I mean, they might be thinking, hey, I might need to go to film school. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know what this is. I don't mm -hmm. know, how, like, I'm interested in telling a story, but I don't know how to tell a story. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what, that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean. And uh, it doesn't have to be how you think it should be. It's, it's I mean, explore, get into it. Mm -hmm. It's doable. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very passionate, mm -hmm. hardworking, dedicated, all those things. And But uh, the possibilities is endless in filmmaking. I personally, I, I, I mean, I take cinema as a reflection of reality. You know? Sure, sure. But at the same time, it also gives you that space and the freedom to distort reality. Yes. To tell you, to... Uh, remind you what reality is. Sure. So that's one thing I like about filmmaking. Sure. So yeah, it's open in that. Yeah, nature. it's open in that. There are some written rules, but mm -hmm. these are very basic. It's just to get you started, I think. But once you kind of get the feel of it, then you are your own rules. You know, you are your own style. So why not? <laughs> one last question before we end the show. Sure, sure. I want to ask you. Um, yes, you've just uh, completed uh, some works for Samu. Uh, 
tell us what the story is about. Uh, which they're going to catch in June, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's about a uh, 17-year-old girl mm -hmm. who works in a meat shop, butcher's mm -hmm. shop, basically. She mm -hmm. sells meat. Mm -hmm. And the way her shop is uh, located, I mean, there's an alley and a wall in front of a mm -hmm. window, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's about the people... Uh, strangers who pass by the alley mm -hmm. and a few customers who walk in. Mm -hmm. It's through them that uh, it's uh, all of them put together. It's a portrait of Tempo, basically. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, she's also pregnant, you know. Mm -hmm. So being amid the meat and uh, blood and knives right. and all the strangers, that also has a lot to do with the fate of her unborn child. Mm -hmm. So symbolic in that yeah, sense. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, like we said earlier, very metaphorical. Sure. A lot to do with the images sure. than the uh, sure. action. Well, we cannot wait for it to come out. Mm -hmm. It's going to come out sometimes in June, I believe. Yes, I think uh, so. Do catch it. Thank you very much, uh, Kezang Doji. Thank uh, you, Sange. Baba. <laughs> uh, thank you for being here in the show, Talking mm -hmm. Cinema. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And have a good night.